This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I am your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap, and joining me, as always, halfway across the world, Jared Morgan. Hey there, everybody. Howdy, howdy, howdy. So we are now, obviously, officially, into 2020, which, were we last time? I don't know. We I forget what day we <laughs> podcasted last time. Uh, I think it was, no, it was in 2019, because I just released it on New Year's Eve, I remember. There you go. There's your answer. So, yay. First podcast of the new century. No. Decade. No, the new decade. Decade. God, new century. Mm. <laughs> Future. <laughs> Future. <laughs> Dates are hard. Yeah, yeah. Right now. I mean, especially since right now, days of the week for me just... Bl- I don't even know what day of the week it is half the time anymore because of my, uh, my schedule working over at the uh, Mouse's house. Um, I work most weekends. I was working today. Um, mm. And so my weekend doesn't typically happen until midweek. <laughs> yeah, and it must be really hard. Like, as a essentially what is a, a casual worker or a shift worker, um, it, it must be really hard to keep track of, of time and, and relative dimension in space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish I had it, Hardest. Yeah, no, it... Yeah. Um, well, it, it, yeah, because... Your shift, it's not always the same shift either. I mean, it's, you know, mm. you, your days of the week might be similar to what you're working, but what time you go in, like I've been coming in at 7.30 in the morning the past couple of days. The week prior, everything was starting at 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So, I mean, that's where right. it just really messes with your head. When does the park open? Is it really early? Oh, yeah. Uh, like 8 o'clock is the standard opening, but then they do these... Like they call it magic hour, so it's like people that paid extra or they were staying in the hotel. Maybe they get to go in and out. Oh early. yeah, so. right. That makes sense because parks normally down here in Australia, I think they open around ten or something like that, which is way too late. Like I would, if I was going to spend a day at a park, I would be leaving at six to get there at seven thirty for it to open for sure. Like why wouldn't you? You know. Yeah, especially if you have the little kids, because that's when they're going to be yeah. awake. <laughs> exactly. That's when they're going to be at their best. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and they believe me, I've seen off. them at their worst. <laughs> oh, I bet you have. Yeah, I bet you there's been some interesting photographs of those. <laughs> Just... um, one thing that was pretty cool, uh, they gave us a cast preview. Uh, so basically anybody that was working at Disneyland for uh, last couple of days and the next couple of days uh, we get to go ride the new Rise of the Resistance ride. Oh, cool. Um, and then it opens it actually opens this week, uh, midweek. But um, Sweet. It is... I bet, I bet you it's good. Uh, it's pretty damn good. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I, I can break down a lot of times what the tricks are, what the, you know, what's going on, what, you know, how something is playing with you. Mm. And this ride, because it kind of is in three segments, uh, how it works, but they really want you to forget that you are on a ride. A ride. Yeah. And there was, right in the beginning, there was this one little thing where I was like, oh boy, if they just... I really hope they have us exiting that way because that's going to make me go, whoa. And sure enough, they had us going up that way and sure enough, the doors opened and I went, whoa. I mean, so they, uh, they, they've they they done cool. some some really cool things. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. The, what they can do with... Um, so I'd imagine the ride is more of a... Um, uh, like a, a ghost train ride with roller coaster elements to it. No. No, it's more... Uh, it starts kind of like a, a walkthrough kind ah, of ride right. and then transition it, the best way I can describe it and I know this doesn't make sense to you Jared unless you've been mm. to Disneyland at some point but uh, we have a ride called the Haunted Mansion and it starts with yes. basically being a walkthrough ride that then you wind up getting into a vehicle and then that's what finishes the ride um, yeah I've been on that when I went to Disneyland Paris okay okay I didn't mm. know they had that there um, yeah, they did. yeah they so did. that's basically the equivalent of what you're talking about is that uh. you're you're doing a little bit of a walkthrough and you're doing a little bit of a ride. And when I say ride, think of like your, what they call a dark ride. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's more on scale with that. But uh, just all the in-between bits and everything that you do and there's like 
actors everywhere being imperial officers and it's it's pretty cool yeah that's pretty cool i think i've, I've seen um as an aside for the imperial officers the just how much attention to detail that they've done in the park for the disney it's not for the disney for the star wars area like you see the, the imperial guards are clearly comedians because they're walking around and just taking the mickey out of everyone yeah you know yeah <laughs> there's that famous one on twitter where the guy was like presented his lightsaber to one of the um the imperial guard escorts and <laughs> i forget who it was i think it might have been um one of the characters from the later star wars yeah hmm lightsaber interesting <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the guard walks up and says look if you're the last hope for the re if there is a last hope for the resistance it is not you <laughs> and keeps walking <laughs> i think it's fantastic yeah so um i'm going to be very curious to see what the crowds are like though when it opens because i i suspect it's gonna be kind of nuts of a line like three oh, hour kind of wait maybe <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it is yeah ah oh, without a doubt uh, well we discussed last time i think or in a, a couple of episodes ago that queuing in rides is part of the disneyland experience well he, he, right yeah unless you got a fast pass and even then you're probably still queuing right yeah, pretty much even then, and that's why we always joke that, uh, like, if I'm shooting photographs at the main entrance, it's, hey, welcome to your first line <laughs> of many. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. all right, let's... Uh, let's unpack some pinball let's stuff. Let's unpack some pinball stuff. We're gonna, yeah, we're going to get right to mm -hmm. it. Um, so we did our whole speculation thing, because we knew it would need to be timely. Um, yeah, yeah. When we found out that Arcade 1-Up was doing a digital pinball, but they hadn't announced with what, with who, uh, we did our whole speculation thing. That was wild fun. We had a good time of it. Oh, so good. We love a good bit of speculation here on the Blockade Pinball Podcast. It's yes, great. we do. Uh, so there you go, folks. If you have anything you would like us to speculate on, uh, throw it our way on email or Twitters or anything or those of you that are uh, watching us live on Twitch uh, post it in the comments because yes we do yeah, love a good, we do love a good bit of speculation um, so yeah we had our fun and then all of a sudden news and leaks started trickling out and I'll be damned if we didn't nail some of it <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> in typical speculation style all speculation is usually pretty accurate yeah so here's the, here's the deal um, yes Arcade 1UP is making digital pinball, uh, three-quarter mm. scale. Yes, they partnered with Zen. Good on you. Good choice. Yeah, um, yeah, winning choice. And it is going to have a 7-inch full-color LCD display. This is what they say. Um, Widescreen. Not... What's that? As well. Widescreen. 7-inch LCD display, according to the box art. Yeah. Um, that being said, the LCD display that is... And this is for the DMD. Uh, mm. let's, let's get that out there. Uh, back box is going to be a translate. Uh, yes. In the case of Star Wars, it looks like you can change out the art, which is kind of cool. Pretty sweet, yeah. Um, but nice for... after-sales tactic there from Arcade 1-Up. Uh, yeah, or it'll just come with the stuff, you know, hey, throw this piece Oh, maybe. Of, you know, I mean, who knows? That'd be cool. Um, but what I've seen the DMD is it's not a four to one scale DMD. It's a classic, uh, I guess you would say 16 by nine, uh, seven inch display, which yeah. then all the DMDs that I've seen on display means that it's all squished, which is yeah, not a is. good look. So it's not, no, that would be the first thing <laughs> that I would say, Hey guys, how about and letterboxing it? <laughs> yeah, letterboxing it. And you know, there's a real, depending on what game you're playing, you could actually easily put some sort of marquee art around the letterbox display. And, and yeah, you show don't have to show the whole display. No, no. No. So they'd be easy to do. Yeah. They, they just need to mm. rescale because that's exactly what Color DMD is doing, I think. I don't think that they have just so, totally. a DMD size yeah. monitor. I think it's a fuller size monitor that just is sunk and fit into where your typical yeah, DMDs go. In the case of um, in the case of the Adams family, they've even got the monitor like protruding below where the thing lights are, and the monitor shines behind where each of the thing like lamps are. So they can actually map out a matrix of like what happens and where everything's positioned. So yeah, it's definitely like a full a full size display. Um, behind there 
Yeah. So, mm. uh, but there you go. 7-inch DMD, uh, Translite for the back box. Uh, I believe it's a 24-inch monitor uh, for the play yeah. field. Uh, That's right. Biggest difference between this and Toy Shock being that they sunk the monitor down, <laughs> and then yeah. it's a piece of acrylic over the top. It's not glass, it's acrylic. And... Yeah. But that's going to give you kind of that looking into a pinball cabinet feel, unlike a lot of your uh, uh, digital video pinball cabinets where the screen is right there on top. Um, that's but that... right. Now, I've got some comments to make about that because I've been having a look at all the videos and all the photos that are floating around the inter on the internet. And I've seen it's a bit of a trick that that bezel trick that they've done because yes. you know how the the toy shock one you know is all up in your face like it's right there it's got a big black well it's gray and they're releasing an iteration that will fix that more on that later um but the it's right there but Correct. the thing with arcade one up is it's still the same size monitor but it's as you say it's it's inset so you you actually still get a bezel it's important to realize that it's not an edge to edge cabinet fitting display. The bezel is sort of like a, a diagonal sort of shape floating in from the top of the cabinet down to where the, the monitor is. And it's, it's definitely a bezel, but it's a, wait, it's so you're, a, you're talking about the front apron basically. E, no, um, no, I'm talking about where the, um, the perspex is. So where you're actually looking into the, the, the pinball machine it's actually a bezel, but it's it's got like diagonal sides on it, so it's not an edge to edge display. Like oh, you, you I, okay, I see what you say. So from the top of yeah. the of the the the, uh, the bezel, the, the Lexan top. or the the, yeah. the plexiglass, then the the walls are coming in on the diagonal into Correct. the monitor itself. Correct. So it's not it's not as good as you might think, and. It's just worth noting that I hope that they design that like because this thing again we'll talk about when this thing might be out. Uh, I hope they actually take some feedback on board and and don't go with that approach um, because it's just not what people want. Yeah, the the thing right. I noticed was that it has you know, you know so where your palms are so the apron is got mm. a big area that's just solid you can't see through and then you've got yeah. the screen but when you look at the screen. It's got the apron on it, also. So yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it winds up being a, a a much smaller full view of the playfield in that yeah, aspect. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. It's it's an odd trick. It's it's it'll make it feel like you've got a better deal if you buy one and they don't make any changes before release. But in reality, just be aware. Unless you know, unless my eyes were playing tricks on me, and I don't think they were, because there was a video where. The um, the prototype was actually rotating on a on a platform at, at the stand, and I the, at the point at which it stopped, I went, "That's got a diagonal bezel. Uh, what's going on here?" <laughs> okay, yeah. So yeah. and this this is clear to note also. Everything that we saw very much a prototype. <laughs> yeah, very not, much. So not the final uh, build at all. It looked official. It, it looked like it was ready to ship, but. Uh, when you actually do a bit more digging, this is going to be a quarter three 2020 release. So a yeah, while so, to wait yet. So end of summer, fall, basically, hey, when yeah. Star Wars released on Switch. Yes, correct. Uh, so, which timing, interestingly enough, because Star Wars will be the first table uh, out as far as out. I'm aware of. Um, mm. They keep on mentioning Star Wars quarter three they haven't mentioned bally williams quarter three no that's true it's been a lot of press on star wars but um i mean you could play the 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 build of um attack from mars there but there was no firm release date on that um yeah and for and that I matter i don't know if there was there was no game selection ability there was no menu none of that it was just attack from mars ready to go that's right yeah it was very um, much and i've got a feeling it may have actually not been uh no, I was going to say it may not have been the finalized hardware, but that's incorrect because somebody, I think it was uh, uh, Patrick Walton from the um, uh, the Facebook uh, group, Toy Shock Facebook group, he was being a, um, a booth babe there for the Toy Shock. And uh, he was, of course, looking around at all the other products and said, yeah, I, I looked through the, the cabinet and there was definitely a board in there. So it didn't look like a, a PC. 
So it looks like they've gone the same approach as Toy Shock did and actually floated their own uh, design. But that's interesting. So so early on uh, in the piece, like the to actually cut a board, uh, you'd think that they'd actually wait a little bit closer to release to finalize what the actual architecture needs to be. I don't know. That's well, and again, it might be a prototype board. It's hard to say. The the one it, video I watched mm-hmm. when they were kind of peeking through the cracks of the the back of the machine, they were like, "Yeah, this stuff is just like sticky taped on." <laughs> Yeah, it, it was. It's pretty like, hey, look, we've got a cabinet which, which you know demonstrates everything, um, and it, you know it may have been that the uh, the board that they saw and there was actually the solenoid interface board because it's worth noting that there's proposed and again we have it's, to say proposed there is because, haptic feedback, haptic uh, feedback and this the video solenoids. I just watched which was somebody playing uh, it was uh, from CNET and mm. they were doing an interview uh, with one of the guys from One Up and they had the Attack from Mars cabinet there and they actually let the guy play attack from Mars, yeah. so it was working and he was commenting it's like oh hey this is great i you know i can feel things um they kept on mentioning that there is some trick going on with the monitor though oh in terms trick. of making a little bit of a th- and this is where it's it's questionable because you never know whoever is reporting it they might look and go hey that looks so 3d but are we talking about it head tracking 3D or just what we're used to seeing and they're just kind of impressed at the fact that it doesn't look like a top-down 2D pinball. Look, Yeah, like Space Cadet. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So that's a, this is why I want to get my hands on some of these and I wish that I could have gone to CES. But, um, yeah, I know, right? Yeah, where's our <laughs> ticket to CES? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Jared. We might have to actually, you know, we are technically able to get uh, tickets to CES. Um, All right. It's because of uh, us doing podcasts. Maybe, maybe next year I'll have to. Maybe if it's worth a while going, because it's not cheap, um, right? So. Uh, like well, no, there. the trip to Vegas. Uh, for me, driving to Vegas, that's not expensive. Staying in Vegas, that's expensive. That's expensive. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, remember one sure. year. One year I went to CES and we literally drove there at night. Got there at about midnight. Slept in the car until oh. you know seven in the morning when ces opened went to ces for the day and then drove home <laughs> yeah that's no fun at all nope not at all <laughs> no <laughs> especially when you realize how big it is and how much walking you're doing um okay other yeah. things to note uh adjustable mm. legs i'm not sure how yes. they're just i mean is it your where you mount it on the cabinet itself that's making it no, adjustable are, or not? Um, they've, they've got adjustable feet Oh, like okay. A regular pinball machine, yeah. Okay, um, it's less than five feet tall from the back box. Um, mm. So, like we say, it is. It's definitely three quarter scale. Um, does have an accelerometer for nudging. Um, yes. So a lot of those things that we were saying, hey, it would be nice if it had. It has. You know, again, it solenoids. Has, which is good. Accelerometer. Um, uh, a, a better back box <laughs> display. Mm. Um, interestingly enough. They say it's a color LCD screen. And when I saw one of the displays, and I think it was for Star Wars, the DMD looked like it had been colorized a bit. But I haven't been able to get any information on, is it in fact a custom color bit, or is it just what Zen has done, which if you play, if anybody's ever played multiplayer, um, each person playing can have a different colored DMD in terms of instead mm. of everything be orange, everything can be blue, everything can be green, you know. So that might okay. be what it is doing, indicating who the player is. Um, Interestingly, a- that screen that was displayed, like the the actual colorization of the screen, looks suspiciously like Scared Stiff. Or, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, it's suspiciously like Scared Stiff. Uh, so that's interesting. So again, who knows where they're pulling... This stuff because also in the pictures that I saw, the DMD looked correct, but then in the video I've seen, that's where it looks squished. squished. So, yeah, um, yeah, there's a lot of Photoshop going on, I believe. <laughs> oh, there's, there's plenty of Photoshopping happening at the moment. And CES isn't like in the case of Toy Shock, they had a product you can, well, they had a first run of the product done. And when you look back at it now with 2020 Vision, you know why they did it. It's because they wanted to say that they were the first to the market. 
So they probably released their their initial short run of the Toy Shop Cabinet for a positioning exercise. They wanted to be out there. Um, Correct, so, especially if you're dealing with a product that uh, I'm not again haven't got my hands on it, so I can't call it an inferior product. No, but you're dealing with a product that I like to refer to it as you know Transformers Transformers versus GoBots. Um, yes, GoBots yes. were on the market first, but everybody realized that they were not the same thing as Transformers. <laughs> that, that's right. The other thing too is that like the more and more people that I that are like going onto the the Toy Shock fan page, there seems to be that more and more now a common thread of mm, lag is a problem, and they've actually addressed that. Like the Toy Shop, uh, Toy Shock have come clean and said, "Yeah, look, we're looking into the lag issues," and Farsight's actually working on a way to to fix that up. Now, the interesting thing is that that cabinet is not Wi-Fi enabled, so the Toy Shock cabinet in its current form. So for those people who jumped on early and forked over their clams, are they stuck with what is essentially a, uh, an isolated product that's not going to get any updates or, you know, what's going to happen? Yeah. You're dealing, you're dealing with the first gen version of something. And that's very much, you know, when you're an early adopter, you're an early adopter. (laughs) Um, yeah, that's right. It's, uh, it's one of those things, I guess, isn't it? Yeah. Um, okay. Something that, uh, wasn't on the cabinet, no plunger. Yep, zero plunger. And boy, in the Arcade One Up um, Facebook page, because I decided to join another Facebook page, Chris. It's the Arcade <laughs> One Up Scare Quote Official page um, on Facebook. And, um, you know, people were debating at length. And this has been happening in the Toy Shop page as well, because there's cross pollination between this information. Everyone's excited. Sure. Um, you know, they were saying, oh, you know, it's not real pinball if it doesn't have a plunger. You know, you can't even, you know, control the. Some people were suggesting that, you know, oh, with digital plunger you couldn't even control the the depth of the the plunge anyhow and i go well that's not right so (laughs) nice nice idea there mate but no that's actually incorrect uh (laughs) even on the toy shot cabinet you can actually make skill shots consistently with that plunger even the first iteration that's the other thing they did with the uh the next iteration with the black bezel that they've um showed at ces they actually have a looks like a different plunger assembly on it so they've taken feedback from the community there yeah, and correct. Improve that aspect, which is good because it needed to. It's very toy like. Um, yes. So we're going to get into the toy shock stuff just because at least Jared keeps on dropping a little nuggets of, <laughs> of what yeah. we'll so for we'll comparing and contrast purposes, but we'll we'll get shock. into some of those details. Um, here's the deal. So. Uh, asked right here by uh, the Ghost Throne, uh, what is the price of the cabinet? Um, we have heard 500 to 700. Mm. In the CNET video I watched, the guy specifically said 600. So, I, you know, it might vary. I don't know. It de- it's going to depend. I think they're hitting their bets. Yeah. At the um, Wait, uh, waiting for that build materials to be finalized. Right. Because <laughs> um, especially since if you look at the two cabinets that they built, they put chrome pieces everywhere, even on the back of the cabinet and i suspect when push comes to shove there ain't gonna be no chrome on the back of the cabinet uh, no, not in the back there's no point in having it there not even real pinball machines do that no no yeah uh so uh, there's gonna be some build cost cutting going on there uh the they did mention when talking about attack from mars he said there's gonna be probably about 10 tables included um mm. so there we go again with my idea of, hey, how about including all the games that only use a launch button anyway? Mm, and, which is heaps. Which is, of the DMDs, there's a lot. Um, and then when you make your next set of cabinets, do it all with the ones that use just the plunger. And then you don't include the launch button, because it's not necessary. I mean, mm-hmm. you can do it. Exactly. Easy. Um, the thing is, with uh, Toy Shock, all the games required a plunger to launch. Correct. So they had to do a plunger. Well, and, and in inevitably, respect. when Zen gets around to doing uh, all the pre-DMD tables, every They're single one of those is a plunger. On. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, I've seen people say, oh, well, hey, I can do the digital plunger on Zen tables. Yeah, you hold the button down and it goes down. Yep. But good luck getting some accuracy because that thing goes fast. Um, yeah, it does. You... you 
you're right. It's yeah. very fast. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's that's one of those things where it's it's not going to cost much. Again, with my mini cab there, the opto sensor, the IR sensor for doing the plunger on there, because um, as you can see, I have an actual plunger. Um, Mm. I think it was a real one too. Yes, I think it was twelve bucks for that, and that's a Williams plunger, actual real Williams plunger. Um, those can be probably twenty twenty five bucks, I think, brand new. But mm. you don't need to put an actual Williams plunger in there. Uh, they can build their own, and if you're making them on mass, it's going to be much, 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 much cheaper. <laughs> yeah, it's cheaper. Yeah. So e economy of scale, that's what's going to be going into this. Um, that What I really liked about the cabinet, though, what they did with it was they even made a fake coin door, which I really wanted to put on mine. Eventually, I'll get a fake coin door on there. Um, but yeah, they, they put a fake false front for the coin door, and that's mm. pretty cool. And that's where some of the button interfaces are exactly. on the front, which is, which is the right place to put it, Yep, really. Yep, it makes sense. Sort of it really makes sense. Um, mm. So with Star Wars, again, if they put 10 tables, hey, they've got, what, 19 tables available. We all suspect that there's going to be yet another Star Wars table coming out. So oh, yeah. wouldn't that be cool if you could have two Star Wars pinball cabinets side by side? Pretty cool. Yeah. That would be. And then throw in, you know, another Zen table <laughs> and right next to that, which would be your Attack from Mars style. Um, no, I think these are going to be. I think these are going to be a big hit, and it's only a Huge matter of, hit. only a matter of time before they've. I mean, it won't even be a week before somebody mods the hell out of it and throws a PC yeah. in there. <laughs> well, exactly right. Like I can see Steam boxes going in there pretty quickly as long as they can work out how they interface with the haptic elements um, and the DMD. Like if they can get that down. If they don't tightly couple that into the main board, they should be fine. Yeah. Um, mm. So, uh, hold on, hold on. I, I'm seeing something here. Jay Willen, you're saying, hello, guess what pinball related, uh, re what pinball related arrived in the post this week? I don't know. What did arrive? Do tell. Um, Let me guess. It's a four shot cabinet. <laughs> and then uh, Ghost Throne says, now we need a Zachary cabinet as well. I agree. Hop in there, yeah. Zachary. <laughs> I totally do. Like this, apparently, you know. I don't think we're going to hear the last of pinball in 2020 with these physical table manufacturers. I think there's going to be a lot more discussion happening. Absolutely. Um, I, it definitely kills me seeing, uh, cause I can't afford one of these right now. So we need to sell a whole lot more t-shirts uh, right there, Jared. <laughs> yeah. It's going shoot. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, the, the, cause at 600 bucks with all that stuff and if it's looking cool that'll be pretty pretty awesome but you know what i would want is i want to wait for the old adam's family cabinet so <laughs> i don't really care like it could be for me if i was buying one it could just be a generic cabinet i would not care it's what goes on under the glass chris that matters yeah oh okay <laughs> so uh jay willen is ah. saying that his blockade mug arrived yes folks he contributed which was hey thank you so much dude um yeah every little penny you, helps Willing. your coffee will taste awesome now <laughs> yeah uh hold on i've got somebody peeking it yes oh okay fine um <laughs> <laughs> we all have our interruptions today right yeah we both have doors going to our office and uh, kids like to poke their heads through them um yes Let's go into a little bit of uh, one-up arcade speculation, though, here. Yep. And that happens to be the fact that they're really pushing their NBA Jam cabinet. Yeah, they, they love it. All right. Like, it's been all over the news. Like, you see, like, that I feel that same video I think you've watched with uh, the pinball cabinet in it had a very extended slot about their NBA Jam stuff. Yes. Oh, cool. So, thing to note, that means Arcade 1UP managed to strike a deal with the NBA. Managed to strike a deal with players that were from 1991. Uh, so, old players association. Um, I hear that there might be some players that aren't going to be in the game. 
But so long as you have the majority of them, that's cool. You're still dealing with teams and their logos and everything official NBA. To which I say, bring on NBA Fast Break. <laughs> but that's right. It's a precedent. Um, yes. Here's the thing. There's no reason to not think that Zen wouldn't go into a licensing partnership with 1UP. Well, they've, they've essentially done that now haven't they really so... I, yeah i mean they've done it in terms of sharing what zen has already paid for uh mm. with arcade one up then producing cabinet art in other words what's that yeah it, you're saying it needs to be the other way around so what, they well, need to like so what i'm saying is though we're because we're now into licensed dnd territory which is obviously yeah, going are. to cost more so mm -hmm. if you've got a partner of this nature, uh, you can easily pull your funds together and help on that front. But more to the point, if RK One Up has already struck a deal with the NBA from the almost near same era as NBA Fast Break, it goes to show that hey, if they can strike it up, hey, how about have our lawyers talk to your lawyers and who talk to their lawyers and just go, hey, we got one other, can we throw that in too? And they go, yep, sure, boom, make it happen. Yeah. So. I wouldn't be surprised if that kind of goes forward um, based off of... I mean, I can't imagine this not being a success for them with the uh, pinball cabinet the, when they first do their release. And, you know, Arcade 1UP already had a deal with Star Wars, obviously for doing their um, cabinet there. And then you've got the Star Wars coming from Zen. So again, you're melding positions here. Uh, I think it could uh, benefit both of them in the long run. I think it could benefit from them, but I'll be put my realistic hat on and say probably won't. They probably won't do what you're suggesting, <laughs> but it would be nice if they did. Yeah, you know, licensing between companies, sharing, sharing, sharing licenses for intellectual property between two businesses, that can't be an easy thing to broker. Like even though you say you know we you could do it. It sounds like it's hard. Well, again, and maybe think. maybe I'm less concerned with them uh, pooling their money together and more about pooling their contacts together. Uh, so you think it might be Zen would still have to enter into the deal, but they'd at least have all that that the path greased essentially. In other words, it's what we had hoped for was going to happen between Farsight and Stern, with Stern having the digital license rights already built mm. into whoever they licensed a the pinball machine for. Farsight still would have to have paid that money, but they no longer have to track down all the individual parties that went into that license. It's right. just, hey, yeah. Stern already did the work. Here, here's our money. Boom, it's good to go. So the same thing would apply here, where it's, uh, you know, if if Zen is bringing a licensed table. So in this instance, think about uh, the Universal Monsters, right? Mm. All of a sudden, one up says, hey, we want to produce a cabinet with that. Zen goes, well, hey, here's our contact with Universal. We've already struck the deal. All you have to do is pay an additional fee to be able to package right. it in this way. But you don't have to talk to Universal, talk to whoever created each of the monsters, you know, any of that business. It's all a nice wrapped up The package. runway is laid, essentially. It's just you need to sort of add a few extra wheels to the plane. Exactly. So in this case, it yeah. would be Zen going, hey, you guys already struck a deal with the NBA. Can we talk to your contact that made that happen? And maybe we can just slide right in. Also pay our fee. And Bob's your uncle. It's, Job's all, done. it's all good. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. That would um, be pretty cool. Yeah, that's what, I would, that's what I'd be kind of hoping for. Um, so mm. there's my, my minor bit of speculation. <laughs> mm. Let's see what happens with that. Yeah. Um, okay, let's go over to the Toy Shock side of things. So as Jared has mentioned, and on display in their booth, they took away the uh, bright silver bezel, replaced it with a, uh, it looks like a textured um, black and gray bezel. Yeah. Uh, they also, uh, like he said, were working on the plunger, doing a better plunger, and they're working on their lag issue so that that's not going to be uh, so much a thing. They were displaying more cabinet art um, choices that they're going to have out there. Uh, so they had Class of 1812, Black Hole, and Haunted House, of course. And uh, I know there was one other. Do you remember what the other one was? Because uh, I think they had four no. machines out there. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the last one. I 
think it was well yeah black hole there was um 1812 oh haunted house for yeah. sure oh bone busters yeah. bone busters bone was the busters. other one yeah, yeah. um <laughs> they had their own announcements though for what is next <laughs> Yeah. So basically what you're talking about is remember those other 10 or other 12 Gottliebs that we said were left and they were mostly DMD and then of course uh, some EM. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they're coming out with uh, their own LCD screen. It ain't 7 inch, it's 14 inches. <laughs> 14 inch LCD. Yes. That's um, colossal. That's colossal. Huge. But you know what it'll play well with? That way they can do reels for those EMs. They can do reels. Yeah, that's um, true. So they and can animate reels and do full DMD then. And for those those more advanced, like, you know, the the other um, alphanumerics that are left on the table, because there are a few left, I think. Correct. Like yeah, there are one or two. Like They'll actually be able to properly render those displays, just like Farsight have done with the HUD and render those actually rather than actually displaying them on displays like led displays like they have so that might actually help as well Make yeah it a bit more universally attractive it might mean that they can actually like in in iteration two of the cabinet they might be able to have dmds and alphanumerics alongside each other just like they have in the pinball arcade uh no word on at least i didn't hear word on when those were going to be coming out um, uh coincidentally quarter uh, three th- quarter three 2020 yeah Ooh, somebody's gonna have Is... a uh, a good time looking under their christmas tree i imagine next year i would think so yeah apparently toy shock was saying uh in the in the facebook group there's a a person by the name of linda falk there uh and i think they're actually uh, linda is part of the official toy shock team if my understanding is correct so she was saying that um, generally uh, at CES, people place orders for these things now. So she said the, these are ready to go as far as they're concerned. They're ready to actually place orders for. So what that means, what that suggests to me is that the bill of materials has been finalized and they are now at the point where they can actually produce and get them ready for whenever the client wants them. So... Um, that says to me that what you saw on the floor is pretty much what the next iteration will be um, for now until we see those DMDs coming out later on in the year. But, you know, they 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 also said that it's funny to see what the community is talking about now versus the runway they've already laid out and where they're going to um, with all this, with, with, with these digital products. They said, you know, we're, we're already well ahead where we're telling you now. So it's interesting to see what is coming out from the community based on what we're doing. So it's very interesting to see how the runway works with these sort of physical products. Yeah. Cause it's not just a, uh, uh, Oh, you wanted this. Okay. Better slap together in a month later. There it goes. Doesn't work that way. No, you, there's a lot of extra complexity that is involved with producing a, a physical product. So, yeah, you know, my, my question is how is toy shock going to respond to one ups entry and are they going to respond in kind? In other words, are they going to put in an accelerometer rather than having button nudging? Um, are they going to maybe sink their play field down? Um, you know, who knows? We'll see what what uh, what comes of it. I would strongly suggest that they would at least have accelerometer nudging in it. They, that's just a a logical choice. Um, so yeah, that would be definitely included. Uh, I think my personal feeling is Toy Shock is going to be going on price rather than features. Whereas I think RK one up will be looking at features, um, uh, over price. Yeah. So I think they're going to be offering more of a premium entry level, um, product into the market versus something that is an easy decision for people to make, um, to put on the Christmas trees. Correct. Uh, it does make me want to circle back around to the Wi-Fi uh, thing that's going to be in arcade one ups offering. Because um, that's a big confirmed differentiator. It is a differentiator, but I think people are confused as to what it's going to be. And I'm going to base this mm-hmm. off of what they said that they, because it is going to be inside of uh, NBA Jam. And the yeah. whole point of it is for NBA Jam purposes, leaderboards, 
and being able to play with somebody across the country, uh, having them right. basically push player two and join your game. In the mm-hmm. case of pinball, I think it's going to be definitely for leaderboard purposes uh, yep. and for updates to the uh, to the tables, anything that gets yep. updated uh, by Zen. But it is Bug not fixes. going Absolutely. to be for additional tables. No, I don't think so. Like the on the box, on the mock-up box um, boxes on display at CS, they did make strong mention of the fact that you know there would be Wi-Fi, but um, it was for game game. They said game updates was specifically stated on the box, um, and that doesn't mean they didn't say anything about DLC or downloadable content. Um, so. Yeah, I think what you get on the box is the basically think of it like going and buying the Wii version of Pinball Arcade. You get those tables on it, and that's it. And right. again, Arcade One Up is a hardware company, not a software company. They, are. they want to sell their hardware. They could care less about how much software you're necessarily getting. Um, space is yeah. not their concern; it's your concern. <laughs> mm, that's right. Yeah. Um, so, whereas Zen, being a software company, yes, they want to pump their software. So, I'm a bit surprised at the fact that they're going to offer 10 tables. Um, that's more than I suspected. Way more than I would have suspect, suspected too, but it makes sense. Um, because look at the other competitors in the market, like um, At Games, uh, and their um, arcade offerings. You know, They included a whole lot more games on their um, uh, Legends um, cabinet than... Um, either of the other manufacturers and that's definitely made it more popular for them so you know i don't think the ik one-up cabinet would have been able to compete in the same market as the toy shock um cabinet with purely only offering a couple of tables um versus the full set that toy shock is offering so for me, when I saw the Toy Shock offering it kind of made me chuckle and i kind of went hey at least it's better than like as we said those lame plastic pin, pinball machines that uh, were toy offerings mm. for 150 200 bucks that you just kind of went, well, what a piece of crap that you're not going to play more than a half an hour and it's going to yeah. go into the rubbish heap. Um, so it was better, but I was still was just kind of like, eh. But now I feel like, hey, we've got competition going on. And competition yeah. is a good thing for us, the players. Um, for the consumer. Yeah, yeah absolutely. For- it means that people are a little bit more hungrier when they're actually producing their products for us. Yeah. So mm. there's where I would say, hey, even with the Arcade 1-Up, buyer beware um, <laughs> for that first edition. Uh, uh, you're yeah, you're an early adopter. <laughs> I, I, As much as it may be attractive, uh, I don't know if I'd be jumping on that bandwagon just yet because Arcade 1-Up have a history of rapidly iterating on their um, products. They did it with all their cabinets because they had the same problems with Toy Shock when they produced them initially. Um, with their arcade cabinets, they had some problems, and you know I think they, were, they had problems with the buttons and stuff like that. And they in the second iteration, they fixed it all up and it was great. So yeah, definitely buy beware. I think you're right there, Chris. Did you happen to watch? Uh, just as a side note, not pinball related, but still. Arcade One Up related. Did you see some of the other products that they were uh, offering? They were kind of. It made me chuckle that I was like, you know what, that's kind of cool. Um, things yeah, like the, the, the giant, the, little... the giant joystick. Oh yeah, that thing. Yeah. That... <laughs> so it's it's no, basically did... like a three foot tall joystick, and they had one that looked like the old Atari joystick for playing yeah. Atari games, and then one that looked like uh, uh, it had a Pac Man head on it. And all of these are going to, they're plug and play to your TV, not with wires. It's a wireless HDMI kind of deal, I think. Yeah. Um, like a Chromecast, essentially. Yeah, essentially, right. Um, but I was like, that's that's kind of cool. I, I dig on that. Um, the other thing that it's I saw. It's ridiculous, is, but it's great at the same time. It, it, it's fun. I mean, you, you can't argue with it being fun. Uh, yeah. The other thing that I saw that was kind of cool, I mean, we've seen these little Atari mini things i mean i have one that it's a bunch of atari games inside of the atari joystick you just plug the thing into your tv and you plug can the you know, thing in, yeah. go ahead and play yeah. well the 
<laughs> one that they were showing off, it was little tiny Atari joysticks connected to a little tiny TV that was one of the old console style TVs. So, you know, like wood and like yeah. the screen's really small, but the rest of the cabinet is gigantic. And I was yep. just like, that's very funny. <laughs> yeah. This is the thing. They're, they're uh, clearly the arcade one up market is for people who, you know, there's a, seems to be a split. There are people who, they just want to have fun with some video games. And then there are people who, hey, I want to dedicate floor space to this, you know. Um, right. And it's interesting how they split the market. There was that other one that was like a uh, a little teeny tiny arcade cabinet with teeny tiny controls. Right, which was, and, it's a throwback to uh, a Coleco, Coleco used to make yeah. it. You don't know how badly I wanted the Donkey Kong one when I was a kid. I mean, like... Oh, yeah? You just froth at the mouth wanting that thing. Um, yeah, right. So, and it was so it was interesting because I thought, well, how come they didn't? You know, there's that uh, that other company that do I even have it? Oh yeah, here we go. Uh, that made this little these little cabinets, right? That are full on reproductions of the arcade game, and it's an LCD. Oh, LED yeah, yeah. screen that you plays and the joystick works and everything um and here i'll even turn it on up, um, i'll even turn it on pick so, up one of those um, so people well, can we got see a similar thing we've got like a, a game uh, a place called typo here in australia yeah and yeah. you can go and buy these like 101 little mini arcade cabinets like that so i was like, I was kind of surprised yeah. that One Up wasn't making it, you know, accurate. But then when they said, "Hey, we know we're trying to duplicate what Coleco did," I went, "Okay, ah, you retro. got it. it." You know, and this is the thing: they're smart. They're actually going. This taps into people's nostalgia, and that alone will force people to buy stuff. Yeah, there, there's a certain whimsy to it that, particularly uh, if it's the right price. Yeah, but they go, oh, "Shut up and take my money." They're well, they're just, saying oh, those are that's their uh, sub fifty dollar market right there yeah so it's like sub 50 dollars yeah. for that i think they said it's 100 bucks for the giant joysticks and then mm -hmm. obviously the prices go up from there for uh your your arcade the cabinets. cabinets yeah mm. um what we haven't gotten answered in terms of zen is are these going to be the enhanced versions or is it going to be strictly straight up williams pinball with williams physics i mean i don't know what physics is it's going to include. I don't know what graphics it's going to include. Um, we haven't got an answer on that at all. I no. would suspect that it's going to be uh, non-enhanced visuals with Williams Physics. That's what I would suspect. Yeah, I think so. I think that's probably fairly accurate as well. Because if and... they're going to go for the trying to make it as accurate to the real thing as possible market, which is, I think, what all these games are doing, then that's what you're going to do. The minute you throw in the other stuff... Uh, People are going to go, oh, Fantasy Pinball. You know, they're already doing it now. Right. Like, even before the thing's released, they're going, oh, you know, I'm not really a big fan of Zen's, you know, like... Fantasy pinball, you know, stuff. Just give me the the Williams pinball stuff. You know, that's what it's, I want. It's funny over on pin side because this is where I was getting a lot of my information to begin with. Uh, people are like, well, it's still just digital pinball. I'd rather play a real pinball. It's like, well, yeah, who wouldn't? But I'm yeah. sorry, one cabinet of pinball doesn't play ten other pinball games, <laughs> as we painfully know, Chris. <laughs> and right, and more to the point, as somebody was going, you well, this is a, the, people were saying it's probably going to be a gateway to real pinball and everybody like oh well no way because you know five hundred dollars is a that's a far cry from you know five thousand dollars for a real new in box and then other people are going oh well for 500 bucks you can get a pinball machine i'm like really where <laughs> yeah please show me these 500 dollars pinball machines of which you <laughs> suggest are available i mean I granted the two i own were about that price but um <laughs> yeah they required some work and that's the thing. People aren't going to do that if they just want to go and, hey, I want a pinball machine for 500 They expect that thing to be working. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's not going to be the case. And in terms of the, is it a gateway drug? Uh, every single one of us that's been on Digital Pinball Fans that now owns a pinball machine can attest to the fact that... Yes, can confirm it is a that gateway. that is indeed the case. Yes. Yeah. The first hit is always free. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So anyway, that's the that that's all the information that we know about these two uh, these two products, um, mm. 
And yeah, obviously it's going to be a much longer wait than I initially suspected. I was thinking, oh, they're announcing a CES. That means it's going to be out in a month. No, no, not going to be No, it's, that's also surprised me as well. I thought, oh, wow, okay. That's a slow burn in that case. But it seems interesting because Zen did announce it, like unlike Farsight, who sat on the news for like two months before they actually even mentioned it in a newsletter. But Zen was like, as soon as the new year came around, I said, hey, by the way, we're... We, you know that thing about you know being wild in 2020. Here's a new pinball offering that we're going to be doing with One Up. That yeah, Zen's a... going to promote the hell out of this, no doubt about yeah. it. Yeah, like why wouldn't you? It's it's great. But they did say in the in the comments that it's like you know, uh, in, in fact, even the press release suggested that you know there's some yet to be announced big names uh, in pinball or something like that happening with the cabinet. Yeah, well. I think well, you and I both know what that means, Chris. <laughs> right? Um, yeah. So, fear not, folks. We are. Uh, I've already sent off my emails. We're trying to make contact with uh, Arcade One Up, trying to uh, see if we can get some direct news directly from them, given to us, and more to the point, hopefully at some point, maybe we can get one of their individuals to come onto the podcast, and then we can ask a whole host of questions. Expect that closer to maybe quarter two. Of That's it, right? Yeah, because I was like hopping on, thinking, "Oh, we need to talk to him." That no, it's going to be a little while, but uh, we're working on that. We'll Literally we'll try and make that happen. For us to talk to them now, or we'll get them on the show because it's basically like you know <laughs> the equivalent in in product years of five years away, even though it's going to be released this year. Like it's that it's that, that far out at the moment. It's not even worth talking about it. Yeah, um, from a you know, what might be in this thing. So yeah, let's uh, cool the jets and wait for a little bit later. All right. So there you go. That's all the information that we have on that. Um, I want to throw this little piece of information out there because we had somebody uh, inquire on our YouTube uh, channel uh, in one of the, uh, I don't even know if it was, I don't even know if it was a blockade podcast or just one of my uh, how-to guides on one of the games. Um, hmm. But basically the question was, hey, I'm brand new to the uh, Williams app, and how do I get parts most efficiently? Or is yeah, there a right. guide was the, the better question, to which I said, hey, I used to have one, and then everything changed, and so it doesn't really apply that well anymore. Hmm, um, that's right. But my response was basically, these are the quick things to know. A, it's going to take you three to four months to make much progress at all. Uh, mm. That being said, you're going to also have to be playing daily. You're going to have to probably go through at least two cycles. Um, per day. Per day. Oh, on mm. all four challenges. Uh, just to make any headway whatsoever. You are also, like right now, uh, it might be ending real soon, but they just had another uh, limited time event. The purpose of these limited time events is to get you table parts for an isolated chunk of of tables, so three tables was all that they were dishing out parts for, basically. Um, so you can quickly get to at least two stars on all the tables. Because the advantage mm. is, once you get to two stars, you can play those tables offline. Off, no, you still have to play online, don't you? Mm, I think offline is on. They they descoped it from three to two, I think, haven't they? I just know Maybe that you cannot wise. play the table as a three ball. You know, regular table until you've unlocked it at two table at two stars. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, but anyway, that's the whole point: is getting to two stars so you can just play it when you want. Um, yeah. And then it's a and then it's a matter of also just come into it with the frame of mind that the challenges are challenges. You're playing a mobile app game. If you go into it playing it that way, you're not going to be so frustrated with the grinding. If you go into it thinking that you're just getting a mobile version of what is on the console or what is on Steam, that's completely the wrong mindset to go into it with. You're not going to have a good time there. Because, no, again, you... it's going to take a couple of months, not a to couple, more than a few months to even get your first three tables unlocked, basically, you know, completely yeah. four-star unlocked. And in that case, you may as well just spend your money and unlock them with the offer that gets presented to you in the app. Because I got that 16 table unlock deal now for like 50 bucks. 
Oh, so, do they? I didn't know that because that's not appearing since I've already unlocked the table. So I didn't know that there was yeah, anything so of that nature. When, when I logged on to the thing, like when they released the last batch of tables, they said, hey, look, one time offer, limited. You know, you unlock all 16 tables, two star. Um, so look, that essentially gives you what Pinball Arcade was giving you. With, well, no, um, but if it's only getting you to two star, that's still not unlocking pro uh, difficulty, pro physics. It's not, but you can still play them offline exactly the same as you did with Pinball Arcade. And without the pro mode like you had with Pinball Arcade. So Okay. I was just gonna say because it, getting getting each of the tables to two stars is not terribly difficult. You can grind that right. out relatively quickly. Yeah, over four months. <laughs> I I would be surprised. I don't think it's gonna take four people, months to Chris. get to two stars. You're literally it's twenty table parts in total that you need per table. Per table. That's that's a lot of table parts spread across sixteen tables. Eh, oh yeah, that's true. The numbers are yeah, yeah, like the the numbers are big now. So okay, you know, if you want to get if you want to reset your baseline, and this is going to be the problem with with people who find out about this app, the longer you wait, the more expensive it is going to become for you to actually get the baseline set. So you know, as you start to you know, if you want to like get in on the pack now, it'll be sixteen tables. It'll be fifty dollars. You know, the next time they release tables, it'll be, uh, let's say, nineteen tables at fifty six dollars. Yeah. You know, the longer you wait, the long, the more money you're gonna have to fork over initially to get the tables unlocked so you can play them, um, like just regularly. Yeah. I mean, I keep on just going back to the one other online or mobile game that I play. A lot of which is that clash royale and mm -hmm. i've only after what was it two and a half years of playing i've only just now gotten to the point of starting to max out uh cards um uh, not the ones that i actually play because i made an effort to max those out but now just random cards i'm i'm not getting to the point where i'm like oh hey i just maxed that one out oh hey i just maxed that one out um you know it it, it if you're patient and you don't feel like spending money, it will happen. It's just you got to be patient. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, if you're patient, then yeah, go go ahead, spend your four or five months, and you know, play it every day, two two rounds of it every day, um, like two reset rounds every day, and you'll get there. But yeah, you know, I, honestly, I think if you if that's not interesting to you, go and spend two hundred and fifty dollars on a switch light and go and play it like that because yeah. it's, literally it's going to be a much better experience <laughs> much better like, experience absolutely much better experience and you get access to all the other cool stuff that's on switch although yeah. strangely enough though i've been looking at um uh, like facebook marketplace i presume they have that over in america as well where it's essentially like craigslist craigslist on facebook um and i think it's in in competition with um Gumtree, which has different names all over the world, but in Australia it's called Gumtree, which is like Craigslist as well. And the, I, I've been looking at all the, the listings for Nintendo stuff because, of course, I've got like 3DS consoles now. And um, because you've got Nintendo, Facebook throws you up all this other stuff. And Switches are coming up a lot. And, you know, a lot of people who buy the uh, Switch lights are going, oh, look, I don't need this anymore. I bought a Switch, like proper Switch. <laughs> so right. they, they spend the 250 uh this which is what the retail cost of one of these is in australia a 250 australian and then they go no nah, i should really just go and like spend the the 400 australian and get the proper switch with everything that the switch brings so again it's a very clever move by um nintendo definitely a gateway drug they get you into the ecosystem they show you how cool the switch is and they say oh by the way all these things over here you can do it you know yeah. So, uh, speaking of gateway drugs, this will be my uh, our final bit before we go. Um, uh. Thank you to everybody that uh, gave me tips and tricks on how to uh, get the back glass appearing <laughs> on my second oh, monitor. Yes. Um, I got it up, and my immediate response was, ah, if, because now the DMD is just on top of the back glass. If only there was like you know somebody did the speaker grill version. And yeah. then all of a sudden I got notification, hey, it's right here. I'm like, oh, hey, that's fantastic. So, yes, indeed, now I've got speaker grill versions for all the Williams Valley tables. Um, interestingly enough, it turns out that where they placed the DMD was not consistent every single time. It would go up a little higher, a little oh, lower. And that's okay, way. so I just made a slightly larger DMD to just 
slap over that, and I'm all happy on that end. Uh, there was only two that didn't... Uh, I was basically downloading the unstretched version. Um, yeah. There was two that are on that the unstretched link was completely broken. One was, uh, I want to say it was Tales of the Arabian Night, and right. the other one. Now I'm gonna blank and I can't remember. But anyway, two of them were down, um, which kind of was a bummer. But that maybe then want, hey, where's the Zen back glasses with a generic speaker grill <laughs> DMD placement? Because mm-hmm. I would love that, and I don't have Photoshop, so. If anybody out there <laughs> wants to whip up the generic speaker grill bottom with the DMD placement with the Zen back glasses over the top of it, just like they did for the Williams and Bally back glasses, I'd be happy because I don't have those Photoshop skills. So I'm just throwing that out there because you guys came through last time. Maybe you can come through a second time. Yeah, help Chris out. Get his, um, his pinball, not pinball cabinet. Uh, sort it out. <laughs> my, my faux cabinet. <laughs> it's um what I think the best way to describe what you have going on there with uh, the digital pinball cabinet is a deconstructed pinball cabinet. Yeah, there you go. It's it's a uh, floating screen non cabinet cabinet. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's a it's deconstructed pinball. Yeah. Okay, I'll I'll accept that. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, folks. Uh, we're gonna call it a day here. And uh, if we're not back next week, we'll be back the week after that. We'll see what happens in uh, pinball news. We're kind of uh, playing it loose and shaky that way. Uh, also, depending on my schedule. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we I think it's working well because when we come on, we have a really meaty episode to talk about rather than just filling it with fluff. And, you know, everyone likes a bit of fluff here and there. But, you know, there was a point at which, you know, we were fluffing it a fair bit <laughs> between episodes. So, you know. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm being told that you will... Corel Paint Shop Pro costs like, you know, 12 pounds. Uh, that's all peachy, but here's the other thing. I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> just... <laughs> yeah, That's just my excuse, but I don't want to do it myself. I want somebody else to do it for me. Thank yeah. you. Um, you know, in, yeah, exactly. instead of where the Williams logo goes, just put a cool little chromed out Zen logo. That'd be awesome, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, there are people out there with better skills than us, which can do it far quicker than us. And at the moment, yeah, it's economy of scale. Like almost, like we would go, "Hey, look, if it's like Fiverr.com, here's a Fiverr, and <laughs> let's just do it." <laughs> you know, here you go. Right. Shall All I right. Take my five. So, uh, anyway, that's the schedule. Hey, make sure you uh, check out our Twitter feed there. And uh, say hello. Sign up for that uh, if you haven't already. Um, obviously, we appreciate it when you uh, subscribe to the Twitch feed and also to our YouTube channel. That's rather special. Make sure you check out the website, which is blockadepinball.com slash episodes. And uh, I don't know, Jared, we got anything more? What's what's coming up next? Oh, I think probably coming up next time we meet will be um, some stuff and things. That's what seems to come up every week. All right. Yeah. (laughs) Until then, folks. Bye-bye. See you later.